All right, time to deal with the backwash hydraulics example. First key thing, we can't use Stokes law because Stokes law is for laminar flow, but we're doing turbulent flow when we do backwash. And we want to shoot for a target expansion rate of 37% or 25% for anthracite. We'll see what that means in a minute. First, the sand that we're dealing with is the same sand we used in our previous head loss example with the effective size of 0.3 millimeters and the uniformity coefficient of 2.8 and there's the data for that sand. So here are the equations that we use for backwash hydraulics. DL, this should actually be DE, the expanded bed depth. This is what we're solving for. How deep will the bed be when you backwash it? We compare it to D, the depth of the fixed bed when it's in typical operation. Uh, epsilon is the porosity of the fixed bed. F is the mass fraction of the filter media. Um, very similar to our previous example of filtration head loss. Epsilon L here should be epsilon E. Again, the porosity of the expanded bed. And we have an equation for that. And VB is backwash velocity, VS settling velocity. Okay, you can see those. Let's dive in here. We're going to calculate this using an Excel sheet. And I have that Excel sheet actually available right here. And these are all the same numbers as are here in the PowerPoint. Um, so let's just walk through. The sieve numbers were given to us in the problem. The percent retained was given to us in the problem as well. And the ge geometric mean diameter. I took that from the books calculation, but again, we'll calculate the geometric mean diameter the same way we've done previously. And here, I've been explicit about putting it in meters. So millimeters is what we had given to us. We convert to meters so that we can use it in our downstream equations. First tricky part of this problem is VS. We're going to look at figure 8-7 to get VS. And what I need to explain is that VS actually depends on this drag coefficient. And the drag coefficient depends on the Reynolds number. And the Reynolds number depends on the settling velocity, Vs. So that's the reason that we can't just calculate Vs directly. We need to estimate Vs. And so we have figure 8-7 that allows us to do that. So let's look at figure 8-7. We'll take a particle diameter, for example, of 0.002 meters, so 2 millimeters. We'll go up to our specific gravity of 2.65 in our case. So 2.65 would lie a little bit above this 2.6 line. And we'll say maybe 0.3 would be the estimated settling velocity over here. And let's look at our example. And sure enough, 0.3 looks like what we got from figure 8.7. Let's try another one. How about a 1 millimeter geometric mean diameter? Gives us 0.15 meters per second from figure 8.7. Um, sure, 1 millimeter is going to give us uh, 0.15, hmm, maybe a little different than what I would have said, but close enough. Again, we're just estimated, especially way down here when we get to these tiny numbers, 0.126 or 0.0001 meters. That's way down here, and you can't really see it on the table, so we just throw in a rough uh, estimate of 0.015 for the VS there. Now that we have an estimate of where a VS should be, we calculate a Reynolds number, and we calculate that using this equation. F3 is phi, that's the shape factor, multiplied times the geometric mean diameter in meters, multiplied times the settling velocity in meters per second, divided by the viscosity, and this is the kinematic viscosity, it's a meters per second, whatever the units need to be to get R to be unitless. That is very important. R needs to be unitless. We can calculate our drag coefficient using this equation. And note that this is the longer equation for drag coefficient because all of our Reynolds numbers are higher than 0.5. So we have to use this 24 divided by the Reynolds number plus 3 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number plus 0.034. 
And now we can get to our settling velocity. And if I can get this to appear, this is the square root of four times 9.81. Well, let's go see if this is consistent with our settling velocity equation that we had previously. We go back up a little bit and here it is. Settling velocity four times g times the density of the particle, the density of sand in this case, minus the density of the liquid times the diameter of that sand grain, all divided by three times the drag coefficient times the density of the liquid and the square root of the whole thing. <clears throat> I want to interrupt this presentation for a minute here. Some of you might be wondering why Vs isn't the equation that we used previously in the sedimentation slides chapter. These are the slides from the sedimentation chapter and here we had good old Stokes law. Well remember that was for a spherical part particle and it broke down to 18 mu on the bottom here. It's the same concept in the new chapter 8 slides, but we have CD rho on the bottom and no mu. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, mu is in the drag coefficient. And um, it's the same concept again, but for non spherical particles where we have calculated CD separately. Okay, you may continue. 2650 was given to us in the problem as the specific gravity. Let's check that actually. Here, estimated the clean filter head loss. That was the first example that we did. Specific gravity 2.65 um, there. Notice the shape factor is also 0.82. And yeah, that's where we got the shape factor. Okay, so we're good there. There's our settling velocity. And then we have the Reynolds number again. And this is a calculated Reynolds number because the previous Reynolds number was estimated from the estimate of the settling velocity from figure 8-7. So now we're going to calculate the Reynolds number. And the confusing thing here is that this Reynolds number does not use the shape factor. Whereas back over here, let's look at this again. See the F3 there? That had the shape factor in it, but this one does not have the shape factor. And when we look at our slides, we see in the backwash hydraulics section here, sure enough, Reynolds number is just the settling velocity times the diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity. Why don't we use the shape factor here? Well, this is a mystery to me, it has been a mystery until just today, I think I know why. When we look at the book, we see that the conditions during backwash are turbulent, and a representative model for, uh, for estimating the porosity of the expanded bed depth was given by these guys, Richardson and Zaki in 1954. And they came up with this equation with this 0.2247 number and Reynolds number the 0.01. This is an empirical equation. In other words, they just got it from a bunch of data. But the key is that they calculated VB, the backwash velocity, and the Reynolds number using this definition for Reynolds number, VSD over nu. So this equation only works when the Reynolds number does not include the shape factor. So arguably, here when we estimated the Reynolds number, we shouldn't have used the shape factor either. Um, because it was just an estimate and here we're going to do that calculation. But regardless, the, the better way to calculate Reynolds number is to use the shape factor. But because Richardson and Zaki came up with their equation using this other definition of Reynolds number, we don't use it here. Uh, because that's, we're gonna use it right here for epsilon e. So epsilon e is going to be this backwash velocity times v or divided by the settling velocity and there are those exponent that, that exponent 0.2247 um, that we saw right there in that equation. Okay now the question is how did we get this backwash velocity 0.01? Well, let's look at the data again. Let's, uh, let's go ahead down here to these data. Select a backwash velocity a little lower than the smallest settling velocity. Now notice 
the settling velocity decreases as the size of the particles decreases. Obviously, if we backwash with a settling velocity higher than this, we're going to lose those particles when we backwash. So the settling velocity has to be something somewhat lower than the lowest settling velocity. And so we have just chosen 0.01 as that backwash velocity that we'll use. Okay. So that's that. We can calculate epsilon e using that equation that we just saw. Now the retained fraction is, again, just the percent retained divided by 100 to give us that fractional number. And we calculate f over 1 minus el. And that just, or e, it says el. Let's go ahead and change that right now to e e the expanded bed porosity, E for expanded. And we sum all of that up to 2.53. Why did we do that? Well, let's look at our equation again. We, here it is, the sum of F over 1 minus EL or EE. We can get that multiplied times D, the depth, and the depth was given to us. The, this is not the depth of the water, but again, this is the depth of the porous media that we're filtering through. And there's the um, porosity of the bed when it's not expanded, when it's just under filtration. So we go look at that, and here's that equation plugged in here. 0.45 is the porosity during filtration. Um, 0.5 is the bed depth that was given to us. And there's the sum of F over 1 minus Le there. And so we can get the expanded bed depth of 0.7. And we ask ourselves, is that a good number? Well, D was 0.5. D, 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 E divided by D, the expanded bed depth divided by the normal bed depth, is 1.39. So that's about 40% higher than the regular bed depth. And if we go back to right here, the targeted expansion rate, 37% was our target. And we've achieved... 39% or roughly 40% expansion. So we say that that's pretty good. And now you know how to calculate the backwash um, hydraulics. An important thing to add here is how are you going to do this on an exam? Uh, for example, if you have your homework that you did using this cheat sheet that I essentially gave you already and you just plug in your numbers from your homework and you call it good, how does that prepare you for the exam? Well, what you need to do is learn how to do this on paper as well. So the equations that are going to be on the equation sheet will be these backwash hydraulics equations, specifically the depth of the expanded bed here. And instead of calculating all these different rows, I would probably give you one or two grain sizes, and then you would need to calculate that expanded bed depth based on those one or two grain sizes. Similar to our previous example problem, these represent all the different sizes. You can think of it as a stratified bed that has a bunch of different grain sizes. So over here, if, if we only had two uh, sizes, for example, then, and, and let's say the two sizes were half and half, half of one size and half of the other, then percent retained would be about 50 and uh, for both of them. And that means the retained fraction would be 0.5 for both of them. And then you'd only have two things that you would add together to get your total F over 1 minus epsilon E. And then you could calculate your expanded bed depth using that.